away from the evils and sins of this world. We pray that you uh, just watch over this little service, Lord. Bless the, the singers. Bless the, bless the brothers that come to break the bread of life, Lord. Not only to uh, feed us spiritual, but to uh, if there be any here that don't know you, may they come to know you, Lord. For all these blessings, we thank you, and all these prayers we ask in your precious Holy Son's name, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Good prayer. 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 
Did my brother was talking about some of the things coming up the road. Did he spoke about there? Yeah. You know the Lord is involved in something other richly, brother. We open it all lines up.
he's a doll baby too. I went over just to see her the other day because I'd been mowing. Shelby said, you want to hold her? And I said, I want to. I said, I feel comfortable. <laughs> but I'm telling you, she's a doll baby. It's special. And we're over, I mean, you just every time you see a newborn baby, it's just an amazing miracle of God. Thank you. Anybody else before we go to pray? Don't y'all remember Karen, your sister? She's been down in her back having a hard That's time. That's her heart. I didn't know that. Yeah. I'm just blessed. Anybody else? Brother Charlie, I'd like for y'all to remember my husband Fred. He goes Tuesday for injections in his back for the back problems he's had. Yes. I'm blessed. Yes. That back business is, is bad stuff. And Ben and I still have a little problem. So thank the Lord that he blesses me to be able to move about. Anybody else? Remember me and mom. Glad you're here, sir. Remember our family. Remember Linda and remember all our lost in our family. All that would like to have a part in this prayer, that lift your hand. God bless each and every home represent. Anybody else before we go to pray? Remember my mom in your prayer and uh, remember the everybody in the hospital and uh, nursing homes. Less of all, remember the lost that's out in the and the roads and stuff, they don't have a place and know where to live, and they're just living on the road. I've probably seen four of them, and they ask me questions about God, and I try to give it, give them the answer. All they did was just walk away. Like, they're curious, but they're not curious. Yeah. Well, they need the Lord in their life, so I'm we telling you, come back. We all need the Lord, for sure. And keep me in your prayers, too. My blood pressure's been going sky high. Well, I bless you, yes. And thank you all for your prayers for my sister Teresa. Her blood pressure got up so bad here a while back. It was stroke. I mean, it was stroke possible. You know, that's bad. But she's doing a lot better. We thank you for your prayers. And continue to remember our little family. Anybody else? If there's nobody else, Brother Bruce, would you lead us in this prayer, please? Time you've arrived, this precious God. It may be before this service is over. That one that will not 
feet. He tackled them before we were like that. Why well, sign these boys right here? They didn't want to take them. But that's the main thing they want to remember. Yeah. Don't care what they've got for, they've got their stake out. It's where you pinpointed that stake at as far as you're going. And of course, now you've given them ample opportunity for it. Keep going there. And choose what they're going to do. So. We know that you bless them and watch over them. If they're not be today, go in another day. They will. If we just extend their life and mercy upon them and put them on their hearts and minds, they will start watching them to death. Again, we love you. We thank you for all you've given. Bless us with the precious Lord. We ask it all. In Christ Jesus' name we'll pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Glad my brother Terry's come up here with me. Want him to come and take whatever time that he wants. Yeah. Will not close out. Yeah. I would like to say, those of you that's still on the outside of the church, at the moment that that little still small voice starts speaking to you down inside your very being, your life, you don't have to wait till the end of the service. It's an order. When that spirit is moving, Brother Bill, that's an order. That's in the order of God. That's when they need to move. Because I'll tell you how conniving that Satan is, that he can begin to plant things in your mind and heart to say, this is not the right time. Uh, let's wait till my preacher's here or whatever. I'm telling you, your preacher is here. Because he that dwells inside of us, Brother Andy, is greater than he is in the world and is talking about Jesus. So if we get preacher out of the way, let the Lord just bring to our mind and heart what he's taught us as we study, then his will will be done. That's the way that I really look at it when I study. God do bless. Yeah. Yes. Good place to be tonight. Yes. I was thinking uh, while I was reading at the house before I came and about these little scriptures here. You know, the Bible tells us that there is a way unto man that seems right the end thereof is dead. Mm -hmm. Now what that's speaking of, man, this flesh here, what we're made of, there is a way to us that seems right. But in God's eyes, his ways are so far above us. He is so such a holy, righteous God that uh, it's it, it, it's uh, mm -hmm. contrary. It's contrary to his ways. Yeah. And uh, another scripture says, lean not on your own understanding. But the understanding that we need to lean on and need to understand is the very Word of God. Now, I'm speaking of Jesus Christ, the Word of God, and the written Word of God. They are one. They're the same. Everything in this Bible is about the coming of Christ or Him being here or His return and everything that He's done in between. And we got to read a little bit there in, in uh, uh, Mark chapter 10 about this little rich man and how that uh, Christ in his travels with the disciples, the little rich man come up on him and he said he run to him. And it sounded like a, a man that runs to someone. It sounded like somebody that's really seeking, you know. They're, they're wanting something. And when he came to Christ, he said, what much I do to inherit everlasting life? And Christ began to immediately know who he was from, from his heart. He examined everything about him. <coughs> Note everything about all of us. All of our, our deeds and everything that we've ever done, you know. And he began to tell him, you know, uh, to keep these commandments. And he mentioned some of the commandments. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery. He even mentioned the honor of thy father and thy mother there at the end. And the little fellow looked at him and said, All these I kept from my youth up. He was a Jew. He was he was born and raised in this in this understanding that I'm speaking to you about. And Christ had looked upon him with love. Now somebody that loves you, friends, is going to tell you the truth. Yeah. If it brings the hair in my eyes, yes. they're going to tell you the truth if they love you. Yes. Be careful of those that tells you things that tickles the ear and, and satisfies the flesh. They're not your friend. Those type of people that tell you just whatever you they think you want to hear, they're doing you a dishonor. But someone that loves you is going to tell you the truth. And it's Christ looked upon him with love. And he said, yet lackest thou one thing. Yeah. One thing. And he told him, he said, go, sell all that you have. 
give it to the poor, and come follow me. And he said the little man, the little rich man walked away sorrowfully because he had much riches. And that was the very one thing that Christ was speaking about, that he had put all of his trust in his riches. If this happens, I have this to fall back on. You see? And by his understanding, he did, he was, he erred and, and was erred very badly because Christ told him what that one thing was. And he told him out of love. Now the little man went away sorrowfully. And here's what I want to get to. From the beginning, I told you, you know, there is a way unto man that seemeth right, the end of death. The disciples saw what happened, and they immediately began to wonder and murmur about themselves. If, if he can't make it, who can? You see, the world sees things a whole lot different than the master does. They looked upon that little rich man, that little Jew boy, <coughs> as if God had put him in that place and blessed him to have all that and, and really lifted him up. And in their minds, they thought this little rich man was above all because God had blessed him above all. But that doesn't mean so. We know that in life, a man that maybe your neighbor has plenty, he's got a new vehicle, new home, it's all paid for. He might be retired and got plenty in the bank. But when you get to considering all things, it may come out later that he was a, a drug dealer. Who knows? That's my point. Just because things look a certain way, we have a tendency to judge that way. And so did the disciples because he was a Jew boy and he was a rich Jew boy, they automatically thought that he was doing well with God. If he can't make it, who can? Christ had to take time to stop and teach these boys, these disciples. And he began to explain to them that it was easier for a rich man to enter into the kingdom, or uh, for a camel to enter through an eye of a needle than a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. And uh, they began to still not fully understand about it. And he went in further detail there with him to explain uh, with all things God, it's possible with God. All things are possible with God, nevertheless. And this is one of the, one of the scriptures that stuck to my mind there that related back to that scripture that I, that I just quoted to you when I first stood up here. That men have a funny way that our understanding and our nature is not God's way and is not God's nature. If you want to know your Savior, if you want to know God closer, you can because of this word right here. You just get in it and study it, and little by little, God's nature starts to become a reality to you. You become uh, acquainted with him through his word. You understand his ways, and they are far above ours. Now, I'm not telling you you're going to know it all because there ain't no man that knows it all except for one, Christ Jesus. But I, I'm saying you can draw closer to him. And by drawing closer to him, he will draw an iron unto you. But I will tell you, with knowledge comes, comes uh, uh, and much understanding comes uh, uh, responsibility. Because it means that once you come to the knowledge of right and wrong, even into the in-depth parts of this scriptures here that you've got to walk that because if you don't you know in your heart you've done wrong so the closer we draw unto God the more opportunity we have to serve him that's true but it becomes a tighter and tighter line so when we're walking that's why it's called the straight street because if you veer off to the left or to the right of what God is teaching us you falter but Apostle Paul said that we have an advocate with the Father if we do that. And that's what's so wonderful about this word that we, that we read and study. That even in our fleshly faults, so we still have this flesh to, to deal with, this nature. Even in those fleshly faults, we still have that advocate that we can go at any time, day or night, and get on these old prayer bones of ours and say, me again, Lord. And I'll tell you, it's, I, I don't think... You know, my daddy used to say, it's not a shame for a man to be a sinner, but it's a shame for a man to remain that way. And it's the same way for Christians. If you're walking 
and you're seeking God with everything in you and you falter, it's not a shame so much to falter as it would be to just leave it that way. You understand what I'm saying? We have an advocate. We have Jesus Christ that we can call upon, and he is just to forgive. And that scripture, friends, that's not no guessing about it. He said that I'll be with you always. He said I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. And so as a Christian man, we joy in this, yeah. knowing, knowing that even though this flesh right here from time to time gets out of whack and causes us to stumble, and that old devil, he's right there just to gather and, oh, you've messed up bad now, you know, now what? You know, and he wants you to think and understand that, that that's his job, that he wants you to think that you're, that you're a helpless uh, case. But we know that it's far from that because the inner man is perfect. God made it that way. When you gave your life to him and you received Christ in you, you become part of Christ. You become uh, a, a joint heir to the kingdom. Amen. What you have to deal with, what I have to deal with today, is this flesh right here. Where to keep it under subjection, Jack? Keep it under foot. Because if you start feeding that old flesh, it's going to grow stronger than the inner man. And when it becomes stronger than the inner man, then he's overthrown you. So our whole duty is to fear God and keep his commandments. Work righteousness. And we, like I've said many times before, we don't have any righteousness in this little best other than what's in us, what Christ has given us. It's his righteousness that we're clothed upon by, that we have the strength to keep this vessel under subjection at all times. Praise the Lord. We go a little bit further in this same scripture chapter 10 here in Mark. And James and John comes to him. Now, Christ is heading back to Jerusalem and they warned him, you know, Master, they're, they're seeking to take our lives. But yet, Christ wheeled them around and that's where they're going. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> now, James and John is, is listening to Christ and Christ had just told them that I'm going up here and they're going to take my life. I just told them that they're going to take his life. So James and John goes to him immediately, and what do they say? Master, we would that you would set one on your right hand and one on your left hand when you come into thy kingdom. And Christ said, can you drink the cup that I drink? Can you be baptized with the baptism that I'm baptized with? Yea, both of them. Christ replied back, yes, you can, be, you can drink the cup that I'm going to drink, and you can be baptized with the baptism that I'm going to be baptized. Now let's look at that a little bit. The cup that I'm that Christ is speaking of that he's going to drink. Let's think about that. And what the other scripture says right on down through here. When they come in the garden, the night that they come to arrest him. They come to arrest him, and Peter flies up with a sword and he smokes the high priest ear off. Mm -hmm. And Christ rebukes him. And he says, Will I not drink the cup that my father has given me to drink? Now, is the picture a little clearer what that cup is? That cup, friends, is that bitter cup that he speaks of. Amen. He's going to have to suffer, a great suffering. He's going to bleed and die upon the tree of the cross. That's that bitter cup that he's going to drink. Yeah. Let's look at the baptism that he was talking to James and John about. Can you be baptized with the baptism that I'm baptized with? And I spoke on this before, I know, but this is I'm getting back to this uh, teaching here, what I just spoke about the little rich man, and about what we see, what we think is right, this fleshly nature. So he tells them this baptism. And we know that Christ, well, let's take it all the way back when he was baptized. John was in the, in the, in the River Jordan there. And he says, Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. He points right at him. Christ is coming. Christ says that he wanted to be baptized in John. John looks at him and says, It is I that need to baptize the thee. John was baptizing unto repentance. Christ had nothing to repent for. John knew it by the Holy Spirit. John knew it. As Christ come walking, he said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. John knew it. Christ said, Suffer to be so, for it becomes between me and thee to fulfill all righteousness. There's that righteousness again. So John takes him out 
and baptized him. Now here's the kicker of the story. John was foretold that he that comes and you baptize, that the Holy Spirit comes out of heaven and lights upon him and remains upon him. He is the Messiah. Amen. John baptized Christ immediately. He comes straight way up. The Holy Spirit ascends like a dove and lands upon the yes. Praise the Lord, yeah. And it remains upon him, friends. And a voice from heaven spoke. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, man. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. That's the baptism that Christ was baptized with. Now, what did he mean when he said, ye shall be baptized with the baptism that I'm baptized with? On the day of Pentecost. The day of Pentecost. It's right out here. Shortly after Christ left on the mount and was received in the clouds, they go down. And on the day of Pentecost, the scripture says plainly that the Holy Ghost came in like a mighty rushing wind. And like cloven tongues of fire lit upon the heads of all the disciples, and they received the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Now the Bible tells us plainly, Christ's baptism was not John's baptism. John's baptism was the baptism unto, unto, the, repentance. unto repentance. Christ's baptism was the baptism of fire and the Spirit. Amen. Yeah, now that fire each one of us has. I remember when I was first born again, brought into the church, just a little young Christian man. <clears throat> and I can tell you I had fire. I didn't use it much back then. I was shy, quiet. But I'm telling you, that fire burned. I had Christ in me. Mm -hmm. I felt that warmth from the Father. I knew I had it. And if you've got it, friends, you've got it. That's that fire that we all have. And I'm telling you, when we come out to church, what we're trying to do, thank you, brother, what we're trying to do, we're trying to stir up that fire. Yeah. We're trying to light another new little fire in someone. We're trying to talk people in that they'll have what we have. Because we know it's not the Father's will that any should perish, but all come to righteousness and live. God set it up this way a long time ago. Yeah. This is his plan for us. The story goes on. The disciples didn't appreciate what James and John did. They felt like they was trying to take advantage of the situation and somehow move above them. Because they were in the flesh. Because at this time they didn't have the Holy Spirit. And Christ began to teach them. He seen this and he knew. He began to teach them. In the world, he said, in the world, you have men over other men, and they have men over them. And this is the way it is in government. But with you, he said, it'll not, it's not going to be so. And in the kingdom of heaven, it is not to be so. Yeah, in the church, it is not to be so. That's right. There is one God, and he is over all. <laughs> and in the church... Christ spoke right here. He said, I, being master of all, am servant to all. Amen. That you. I'm servant to every one of you. <laughs> and they was looking right at the Son of God. God in the flesh, Emmanuel. And in the church, it be, we begin to understand as we read along that anyone that stands up for Christ speaks in the name of Christ. That we are servants to all. That all we're trying to do is let the light of Christ shine through us that we might gain a few. Amen. Think about that. Now the edification of this is that everyone's involved, all Christian men and women in the church. Right. That you might think that you just come and fill a seat, but it's, it, it, friend, you don't know how much power you've got. That's right. If, if that's your thinking, if that's your ideal of what your Christian life is, you don't realize your power. Because the scripture tells me that we have a direct communication with the Father at any given time 
any given time, one individual. And the scripture says, where two be gathered in my name, there I shall be in the midst. God with us. Friends, you either believe it or you don't. These little fellows, they begin to understand more and more about our God and his ways. If you get in here, I promise you, and you study these words, I promise you that you'll grow closer and closer to our God, that you'll understand him more and more, that you'll see him clear and clear. That's what his desire is for us to draw nigh to him, that he might draw nigh to us, that this vessel of ours could be a vessel of honor and not a vessel of dishonor like the world is. There is a way unto the world that they see, that they think is right, but the end thereof is death. Now, I've also looked at our, our natural government right here in the United States, and I, I have to say, our, our, our fathers, our, our forefathers, that set our government up, it came right out of here. The way that our government is set up, that men are put in office to represent us. Now here's the problem. These men that we trust to do our will, once they get in office, they do their will. And that's corruption. And that's where our government fails. That's the only place that our government can fail. Because our forefathers was wise enough to set this up. Young God him over us. That's right. They saw this. They understood this. What I'm talking to you about tonight. This government that God has set up. The way that he wants his church to function. That there ain't no big me and little you. That there is all one body and each individual has its own work to do and you you stay right where God puts you because that's what he had intended for you. And it's my hope and prayer that I spoke a little bit to you this, this evening and, and you've understood a little bit more closer that we can move a little closer, a little closer, a little closer through this word. But I get to thinking about so many scriptures in here that's, that, that identifies the way that God intends us to be just by a little scripture. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, he speaks to our heart as individuals, but yet we know that we're, I'm no different than Junior. Junior's no different than me. No different than Jane. Jane no different than me. That we're all parts of this, this body. <clears throat> that what he'll do for one, he'll do for all. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes it such a great plan. That's what makes, uh, that's what gives me encouragement when I get in here and read that I know I'm not no big scholar. But yet God reveals things unto me that I need. And he'll reveal things to you that you need. And he will grow you according to the way his plan is for you. And it's up to us to take hold of that, to understand that, and to take joy in that. That that little fire could remain in us. Because if it goes out, friends, it'll be a sorry day on the day of judgment. You keep that that oil burning. You keep that wick trend. You keep reading and studying, and you stay in that straight path. And I'll promise you that these promises that that He gave us will remain true and faithful, and we'll have that up and a better kingdom one day after all. May the Lord bless you and keep you from my prayer. May the Lord. Lord for his messages that comes right down in our mind and heart and we start running scriptures in our mind that it starts building on and, and uh, thinking about that that fire that he was talking about and uh, like John Baptist at the beginning he said I do indeed baptize you with water unto repentance but he that is greater than I am yeah. I'm not worthy to bow down and loose the latches of his shoes he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire 
he foretold them he was being directed to God to tell them yep. the Messiah's coming. Yep. And uh, one time the Messiah was talking to the apostles and to us, and, and he said, every uh, one shall be salted with fire. And that means everybody. And what is that fire? It is the word of God. And there ain't no person when they reach the age of accountability, Brother Bill, that's going to leave out of here that ain't somewhere along the line heard about Jesus. Yeah. God means what he says. He so everyone shall be salted with fire, and every sacrifice shall be salted with salt. Uh -huh. Now, what is a sacrifice? That's when we heard that fire that come down inside of us, that little steel voice that sparked that little flame of fire down inside of us, that we took heed and obeyed the word of God. And he saw that it was Saul. What is that Saul? That's the Holy Ghost. He poured the Holy Ghost yes. right down in it. That's what John was foretelling there at the beginning. That that never was before. That that power and that word, that Holy Spirit, you know, that would come down. And, and like I said down at the Echo today, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word was made flesh and dwelled among us. And the old boy said that we beheld his glory as the only begotten Son of God, full of grace and truth. They beheld. They was witnesses unto the Lord. Yeah. And I thought about what he was talking about one, and I, I think Sean sung, sung a song that had one in it. And that's been on my mind here lately, one. And I remember reading here a while back over in the book of Zacharias that it said that his name is one. Whose name? Talking about Jesus. He was foretelling about this one that was going to come. And then we, then we see when the uh, when the Lord was here and he prayed there on that mount in the 17th chapter of John, uh, the Lord's Prayer, that's the Lord's Prayer there. And he said, these that thou hast given me, thine they were. Who's he talking about? He's talking about the apostles. Yeah. Thine they were and now they're mine. And he said, uh, take them not out of this world, but keep them from the sin that's in this world. <laughs> and Holy Father, make them one with us, even as I am one with you. And not only then do I pray for, but those that will hear thee. The very words that some of the brother, that the brother was speaking about, it come from God directing those apostles, Brother Tommy, to write it down, pin it down for us, and that same spirit and word that comes right down in our life when we give our life to the Lord, and God adds us to the church, and then at a time come along that he calls us to have a want to, to be able to stand up and proclaim his holy name, that he chooses those vessels that speaks on his behalf. And he lets us know that we are a servant. Mm -hmm. yeah. That we are nothing. We're less than nothing. That we are dust. The scripture goes on and on, Brother Thomas. And that puts us right where we need to be. That we'll get creature out of the way. Even as the Lord, the great teacher taught. That everything that he done, he would remind him of apostles and us. Because we still read them same words. Mm -hmm. That I come not to do my will. I come not to speak my words, but every word that my Father giveth me, I speak it. Amen. Every work my Father gives me to work, I work it. What's he saying? I'm getting this creature out of the way right in your presence. And God that has sent me is speaking through me of the words of salvation and the power of the Holy Ghost that's going to come upon you one day after a while. Think about how glorious that is. It all ties together perfectly and peaceful. And the Lord, when he come, and the great works that he done, proving truly that he was the Messiah, that the old prophets had talked about, that was going to come, the Christ. And when he come, that he would remind them and teach them all things that needed to be taught to them. And he would remind them of the sins that they done, that he would know all things and tell them about it. I spoke about it here a while back when he was talking about the woman out at the well. Talking right to her. Told her exactly what was going on in her life. As far as the nature was concerned, they were strangers. As far as she was concerned. But the Lord knows everything about her. And friend, those of you that's on the outside, he knows everything about you. There's nothing that you can I keep hid from the Lord. But the Lord, he already knows about it. And what he wants you to do with it. Lay it at the feet of Jesus. Yeah, right we had to come to that conclusion ourselves, Brother Ruth, that everything that we've ever done, we didn't have to confess it to people. Mm -hmm. no. That spirit that come down in our lives when we was a seeking the Lord. Mm -hmm. But we become fearful and knowing that God meant what he said. And God had already said that those devils and those demons was in chains of darkness reserved unto the judgment. 
And all nations that forget God shall be turned away into it. That brought fear to me. I know that I was a sinner, and you do too, lost man and lost woman. And that you're a sinner and undone and without the Savior. And that you'll not be able to go home with him when he comes back after his church. Think about that. that that's enough to scare folk. When you get right down where you live, knowing that eternity is forever. And there's two places that's going to hold all mankind. And one place is called home, heaven's country. And the other place is called that place of confinement and torment, which is called hell. And it's eternal. Think about that. So that's why we gather together like this, that the church can be edified, reminded of these things, strengthened that's by right. the word of God and the spirit. God fixed it that way a long time ago. And we come together that our lost people can come out to church where we are and hear words whereby they can be saved, as the brother said. Yeah. Yeah. That's the way it works. God fixed it that way a long time ago. In the second chapter, or the second Thessalonians, first chapter, seventh verse, Paul is speaking to the church at that time, Thessalonians. Ye who are troubled, come rest with us. That's pretty plain, eh? Is he speaking to the church, come rest with us? No, he's when he said us. That's the church. And he's talking to those that's not in the church. Ye who are troubled, come rest with us. So he's preaching to lost people, ain't he? There's false doctrine that's going around in the world that that gospel is not meant to lost people. It's meant to God's people. It's in the church. It sure is. It's meant to God's people too. Yeah. Well, let's get it right. That's why when these things come to our mind, we want to make sure that people understand how the goodness of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Not his will that anybody perish. Well, what else did he say? I've concluded all under sin. Yeah. That I may have mercy on all. That's right. So when he first started speaking, everybody was in sin. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds to me like he's talking lost people. Yeah. That's the truth, that Brother Thomas. Praise the Lord. Yeah. And when they went on to say, he said, come rest with us. And he said, when the Lord Jesus Christ was revealed from heaven with his mighty angels and flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and, and obey not the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord. Sounds to me like that pretty scary. Everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord. And from the glory of his power, when he comes to be glorified in his saints. That ain't happened yet, that part there. You know what? Some of them is a preaching. That that's already happened. That's happened to the church. I'll say amen part of that. <laughs> Let's rightly divide this. What else did he say? When Jesus comes in flaming fire, has that happened? Well, the word of God, you said there a while ago, was that flaming fire, so that's... That's come about. I can see where people get confused with that. Yeah. Has the destruction come yet? <laughs> then he's not talking about back yonder when he was establishing the church. In the book of Matthew in the 25th chapter, he says some of the same things there, and that's how they tied it together. And they'll disregard that as if that's not to come. Yeah. And they'll preach that there's no hell. And you'll not be cast into it. That hell's down here in trouble. If you want out of it, give your life to the Lord. You know, the Lord said there's trouble in the world, but in me you have peace. See that tied together. Spiritually speaking, that is the truth. Naturally speaking, brother, that is the truth. But rightly dividing, we need to look into these things. When that he comes back and that destruction is taken forth on those that know not God. And obey not the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. How, when that he shall appear. We shall be likened unto him. On scripture said. Has that come yet? Well now on the inside. We're like him. Ain't we? <laughs> this can be confusing to some people. Because they look at it carnal minded. Mm -hmm. The spirit is first. We that have believed have been translated, born again, not of the corruptible, 
but of the Spirit, the Holy Ghost of God. Not of ourselves, least any man should boast, it is a gift of God. For it is by grace through faith that we are saved. Not of ourselves, it's a gift of God, least any man should boast. So that is right now, ain't it? Yeah. 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 Now if you don't get ready, when the Lord comes back in that flaming fire with his angels, no time to get ready then. Too late. He stepped down from the mercy seat. Let's look at this way he's talking about. And when he comes to be glorified in his saints and to be admired, yeah. all them that believe him. I'm looking at some that believes. And he'll be admired. He's right now being admired, ain't he? See, that's what they say. This has already took place. They're looking at it in a different way. Yes, part of it is. It's spiritual. But I'm telling you that destruction has not come yet. How do you know? Because this world is not on fire. Right. Yeah, look around. We're still walking around on it. And we haven't met him in the air. Right. Another scripture. 528, the book of John. The hour is coming. What did he say before that? Marvel not. Don't be surprised about this. I'm foretelling you that this is going to come about. The hour is coming in the which that all that's in the grave shall hear his voice and shall come forth. Those that have done good unto everlasting life, those that have done evil unto everlasting damnation. Yeah. Contempt and shame, what scripture is that? Yeah. Damnation. What is that damnation? That, that's an old King James word in there, and I like it, because it just gets right down to the point. Mm -hmm. That the judgment yeah. of everlasting punishment. Damnation. You know what I've done here a while back? I looked at a, I got a Greek Bible, and I heard some of them preaching. That ain't talking about damnation. That, that's talking about uh, judgment. I mean, when you're in judgment, you're going to be received or you're not going to be received. But they cut off part of it in this new translation from the Greek. Now, our Bible was translated from the Greek, from Aramaic, from Hebrew, and from Latin. They, the, right out of that same Greek literature, they got that word damnation. And it's exactly right, though, Bill. The more I look into it, the more I see the old King James Version is right on the money. God fixed her at the right time before the world got so wicked that they wanted to do away with the truth. Yeah, yeah. Fix it right at the right time. God was in the control of this. Yeah. Was. The more I dig into it, the more that I see that I'm glad that I have come into a church that has the old King James Version of the Bible. It is the truth. Yeah. Right. That word is crema. This wasn't on my mind, Walt. Go, boy, this man. That's, that's the word in Greek, crema. Yeah. I looked it up, kept studying it. I got my brother Larry looked it up after I looked it up in my Bible dictionary. On the internet, it didn't describe it, what was in my Bible dictionary. You reckon the devil is changing things on the internet till you won't find the truth? Yeah. Guarantee it. You said it just right, brother. My old Bible dictionary, rightly dividing, crema, says judgment. Well, that's what you said, Charlie. They changed it over to, yeah, but they, they cut it off short. <laughs> Judgment of everlasting destruction. Everlasting, yeah. He dropped that part off. I wonder why. The devil don't want you to think that there's an everlasting destruction to come. He knows as well as we, he knows better than I know that there's an everlasting destruction. Yeah. And he's going to be cast into it. Yeah. Right. So we don't want the world to know that. Go on doing what you're going to do. The Lord loves you. He ain't going to cast you into hell. He's just going to make a judgment and say, oh, you dirty, rotten, rotten fellow, you. You are not done that. Well, come on. You can come home with me. That's not gospel. No, no, no. I want people to know, Brother Tommy, the That's truth. Right. Because the truth of God will set our people free if they will believe. Amen. That's true. Yeah. He said, and Paul said, That's true. Jesus. So in, in that up, he said, in that day, yeah. 
A lot of people sleep on hour a day until the Lord's a thousand years, a thousand years until the Lord a day. They'll say that that's going to be a, you know, he's going to have everybody come before him and stand in a big long line, you know, next and judge them. And, and it'll take a thousand years. You know what I mean? You hear all kinds of stuff. I'm telling you, the gospel tells me, Brother Tommy, right now the judgment of God is set. What are you going to do with the little scripture that the Lord was speaking about there in the book of John? When he's talking about those that have made ready, he that believeth upon the Son hath everlasting life. That was right then and there. Yeah. He that believeth not shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Yeah. That's just the way. Yeah. If you're not in the church, the wrath of God is already abiding on you. It's not so bad to be a sinner. It's real bad to stay one. Because I'm telling you, if you stay one and that wrath of God abideth on you forever until the last breath goes out of you, you never shall have another opportunity to make things right. Amen. But every nation, that means every individual in every nation that knows not God and, and follows not the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ shall be turned away into that everlasting punishment. We which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. That's them ones that's in the ground. And the sea. Hard to tell everywhere else. Dust already. Blown around by the wind. God knows where they're at. Every particle. We, we which are alive and remain shall not prevent them which are asleep for the Lord Jesus Christ shall come down from heaven's country with a, with a shout and a, and, a, and a mighty angel on that day. That's that hour he's talking about. He ain't talking about a stretched out time. Be quick work. And we which are alive shall not prevent them which are asleep. He's coming up. All of us coming up, ain't they? Doesn't say that a while ago. But we that is made ready shall be changed in a moment of the twinkling of an eye be caught up together with them uh, to meet the Lord all in the cloud. Yep. The natural clouds? It could be. I think it'd be a cloud of glorified people, don't you? I believe that's what I'm, I, I believe that's what's going to happen. A cloud of glorified people all together to meet the Lord in the air and forever be with the Lord. Think about how good that God is to us. Yeah, forever. Then what does it say? Not there it didn't say. But you rightly divide, you'll see that on that day, Brother Dale, when he comes to do that and, and calls his church up, fire's coming down. Yeah. You mean in a thousand years from then, after that people were suffering and hunting for the Lord and everything? No. He don't say that. He don't say that nowhere in the Scripture. I've looked and looked and looked. A lot of false doctrine going on. Making people have a false hope that, well, I'll make things right at that time. What if you did? Even if that did come about, that well, what if you what if you died before then? Then what? Yeah. Right. You're sealed in your faith. The old scriptures are way back in the old scripture there in the proverb said that if a tree fall to the north, so shall it be. If the tree fall to the south, so shall it be. When that time comes at all the trees and you're a tree either uh, bearing forth good fruit or a wicked fruit, when the time comes that you call these trees up that you're looking at right here, if it was a good tree when you went down, you'll get up a good tree, a bearing good fruit. If it was a wicked tree when you went down, you'll get up as a wicked tree, bearing wicked fruit. No changing after that, are you? Trying to get across to people the simplicity that God has set forth to let them know that there's two ways. And I want them to know the way, and his name is Jesus. Amen. The other way, there's ways that seem right unto men, and the end of those ways is the ways of death. Yeah. How bad is that? Yeah. No scripture. The Lord used these parables, and he also used, now a parable, a lot of people say, well, it's a made-up story. No, no, that, that ain't, that's an allegory. To say, a parable is the same thing as an allegory. It's a true natural story depicting the spiritual information that God wants to get across to his people. That, that, 
I, I said one time to a fellow, I said, well, I just made a story. I said, do you think the Lord would use a lie to bring forth the truth? No. Made up stories lie. Yeah. Everything in that word is true. And when he uses those words like certain, known to be true, known to exist, he's talking about an old man having two sons. Yeah. A certain man <laughs> had two sons, an older one and a younger one. Naturally, unless they were twins, but it, it described the Bible, didn't it? Yeah. And it come about that the youngest one wanted the living that his father had divided unto him. And a lot of people say, well, that was his wealth and money and stuff. Yeah, the natural part of the story. That's truth. Yeah. But when you look that word living up, there's life only comes from God. And we've got part of that right now. Mm -hmm. When we reach the age of accountability, we still got part of that life. Right, right then and there we had it. But it's up to us to have eternal life by our choice, wasn't it? So the young man, he gathered up the living that his father, his portion, and he went out into the world and wasted it on righteous living. There was a time when I was a lost man and growing up here know to do good and done it not, and it was sin to me, and I began to waste the life that God had given me in righteous living, I'm doing all kinds of different things, I'm tasting one thing and another and doing this and doing that. And couldn't find no peace in it, no worse. And this old creature wanted more and more and more of it. It still does at times. God knows our weakness, don't we? But we're aware of it by God's word. He that, he that is begotten, it's right here, keep with himself, but that wicked one touch him not. That's a warfare. That's a job for us every day, ain't it? So he gathered it up and went to wasting his life that livelihood out in righteous living and worldly living. And he come at to a point to where that he ran out of that life just about it, didn't he? And he joined himself with a feller. A stranger had called him. I wonder who that stranger was. I always looked at that as old Satan, that old stranger. Going to and fro in the earth, seeking whom he may devour. Got the world. And he wants to tear up churches and, and devour God's people. And he's working hard at that. Especially, hey, have you noticed how bad things are getting? <laughs> Time is running down to the end. The Bible said that there would be signs, tribulations, troubles, different things, earthquakes and divers back, storms, all these things. We can see little signs in the natural that is depicting it's coming close to the end time. Better get ready, hadn't you? Better stay ready. So when he got out there and joined himself with the stranger, the stranger put him to a job. He wasn't good in either way. I've got a bunch of hogs down yonder. Why don't you go down and stop them, feed them? He went down. He must have been pretty hungry, wasn't he, Brother Thomas? Because he desired the very husk at them old hogs. Have you ever raised hogs? <coughs> Man, we did. I, I really hated that when I was a young teenager, but I know boy tastes good, and I just go ahead and do what Dad told me to do. <laughs> go, to, go, to, go to school, smell like old hog. Try to stay away from the girls. They smell, you know, never want nothing to do with you again. <laughs> That's where he was at. The world of sin. <laughs> desire, and he was in bad shape. He was desiring that very shop that hogs was at eating. God knows how to depict a story that's true. That's happened, my friend. Oh, yeah. That's a true story. That's a little bit happened to me in my life. That's not made up. I didn't like it. Desired the very husk that the hogs did eat, and no man gave unto him. I remember the old brother preached, well, at least he wasn't a thief. That was okay. That's good. That's one thing out of the way. But that ain't what that means. Listen. I can't give nobody that's in this house sin. No. And I can't give nobody in this house the righteousness of God. Can't do it. We can't. None of us can do that. No. You can offer it. It's up to you to reach out and get a hold of it. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. No man got it to it. Pure sin in that hog trough there. And he desired it. 
And he realized, this is not for me. This flesh is desiring your own thing. It's nasty. Hog slop. That's what's out in the world. That's why the Lord said, come ye out from amongst the world and be ye separate. For I am God and besides me no other Savior. He said, I know what I'll do. Sounded to me like he was coming with a good sense there in his mind. Yeah. You study about that. Yeah. That's talking about all Christian men and women. That's right. That's right. We was all right there in the hog talk at one time. Ain't no use to beat around the bush about it. Right. We got to sin, wouldn't we? Yes. Needed the Savior, didn't we? Yes. I know what I'll do. Still I remember when I was in favor with my father. Y'all remember? When you was growing up, before you reached that age of accountability, you was in favor with God. We didn't know at the time we was in favor, but we just felt free, didn't we? We felt good. Didn't feel like nothing was going to bother us or anything. I mean, I remember that. But I remember when I started to dabble and then seeing and know, man, it made me feel rotten. Y'all remember that? Yeah. I was about 13 years old, barely. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, that old boy, he realized where he was at. That's what we want our lost people here this evening to realize where you're at. You don't have to stay there. You can come out of it. Today is the day of salvation. Harden not your heart. Now is the accepted time the Lord's calling unto you. If you want to drink of the water of life freely, come and get it. It's through faith that you please God, and God will receive you. And no other way. I can't get you in. If I could give this to you, Brother Tim Napper said, my arms ain't big enough. said, if I could do it, I'd go back and get everyone and just bring into the church. He said, don't work that way. I remember that when I was a little fellow, this little Tim Napper. He was like a papa to us. A lot of respect towards that old man. He's smart. He was. That old boy at the hog trough, Dale, he said, I know what I'll do. He waited out, didn't he? Yep. Are you waiting it out, lost man, lost woman, this evening? In your mind, that's what God wants you to do. Wait it out. I did it. All of us did. Yeah. Yeah. We was all there. He said, I know what I'll do. I'll go back to my father's house because he has bread and bread to spread. Yeah. What Jesus say? Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and they are dead. You fellas thought that that was the bread of life when it ain't. I'm here to tell you, Jesus said that I am, I am that I am, I am the bread of life that come down from God out of heaven where a man could eat thereof and never die. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Except you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, you'll have no eternal life abiding in you. That's right. Oh my goodness, them old fellas like to see them rub their heads saying, how in the world, Brother Thomas, can we eat of his flesh and drink of his blood? This thing's carnal minded, wouldn't it? They wouldn't want, they wouldn't willing, Brother Bill, some of them yeah. that was a father. I ain't talking about the apostle, I'm talking about some other father. They wouldn't willing to wait around and say, let's see what he really means by this. He's bound to have a serious yeah. meaning. You know what them old apostles said? They want to stick it out, brother. We don't understand it, but we know you've got you're the word of truth. We know you're the Son of God. There ain't no other place to go to. You are the way, the truth, and the life. Don't understand what you're talking about right now, but I know it's just right. That's faith. They're right. gonna stick it out, wouldn't they? Amen. That's what we're doing. Amen. So that old boy there at the hog trough said, I, I'll go back to my father's house. He's got bread and bread to spare. Even the servants, man, there, you know, got something to do. What the brother's talking about, why, even I can eat. I'm just a servant. Just a little local. That's what God has placed me here to do, just, just be a little servant. And I can eat too. That's right. In my father's house. So he, did he just sit there and twiddle his thumbs and say, well, I said it, God will accept it. That's amazing. Man, you know, and once that you believe it, you got to move out on it, don't you? Amen. Got to add some work to it. James said over there, where he wrote down unto the church directed of God, he said, show me your faith without works. You can't do it. He said, but I'll show you my faith by my works. He said, the devils believe and they tremble. So it's, faith is more than just believing. Believe is the beginning of faith. 
He said, Thou believest in one God? There's that one again, eh? Yep. Thou believest in one God, he said, Thou doest well. But them devils, they believe also, and they fear and tremble. Mm -hmm. So it takes more than belief. And it, 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 you need to move into that faith. And when you get a hold of that faith, then you will start doing something. The old scripture said, faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. By that faith, the elders of the old church back there, talking about the ones that believed God, God received them because they had faith. By faith, they got a good report of God. Yeah. Well, read about it. You can go on down to Hebrews there. Yeah. I think that's the 10th chapter. And it tells about what they was doing. 11th chapter. Yeah. And that's that's why God was pleased with them, Brother Bill, because they believed what God had said and they was doing something. All of them was working works. Yeah. But they believed first. That's that faith. And they moved out on it. So James went ahead to say over the scripture. He said, Faith without works is dead being alone. So lost man or lost woman, you could have a bucket full of faith, and if you sit right where you're at, you're going to die in your sin. Yeah. Go to the devil's heaven. Except that you, the simplicity of what God said for you to do and what we done is to confess the Lord with your mouth. That's simple, that. Mm, yes. Be buried with him in water baptism, mm -hmm. raise up the walk in newness of life. That's once that they're born again, not of the corruptible, but of the spiritual. Answering of a good conscience towards God. Right. It's doing the things and the works. Is it the works God of men? No. It is the faith and the operation that God brought in His Son Jesus that got them in started. And when they got started, they fulfilled what God had told them to do. And it was concluded unto them of righteousness. Yes. Even as it was Father Abraham, because God, listen, he heard God. He believed God and he done what God said and it was imputed unto him as righteousness. That's how that we become righteous because the Holy Father, Holy Son, and Holy Ghost took up their abode in us. Born again, not of the corrupt world of the but the Spirit. And then we are considered in the eyes of God righteous. Yes. You can have that same thing this evening if you believe with all your heart, so strength and might. Amen. So when did he decided to get up and do something? Get back to the prodigal son. He got out of the pub trough and around all that work, and he started putting one foot in front of the other, as Brother Chris says, a journey of a thousand miles starts with one step. Right. And he wasn't heading away from Father, but he was yeah. heading towards Father. Yeah. Did Father know that he was coming? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah he did. Yeah. Do you know the Father knows everything about every lost man and woman's heart right now, that he knows the very moment that you're going to start moving toward <laughs> him? Yeah. Yes, sir. And he knows the very moment that's the last opportunity that you're going to have to do that. And it's your choice whether that you're going to move or not move. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Amen. And death may be around the curve down there for you. Yeah. What are you doing, Charlie? Trying to scare me? Absolutely. Because fear in God is the beginning of wisdom. And when you begin to fear, then you begin to seek the Savior to get out of that fear. Once you find that Savior and get out of that fear, you talk about a peaceful, happy little pilgrim yeah. on your journey. Mm -hmm. I remember That's when saying. the Lord came down on my life, I felt lighter than a feather. That's the best words that I can use. Yeah. Yeah. That he took all everything away, all my sins and everything. Well, Charlie, you've done said that he bore all of it already on the cross. Why'd you have it? Because I hadn't believed yet. Yeah. It's still compiled upon me. I still am I still in prison yeah. of that sin. I'm still right there, all wrapped up, and he's got the keys. Mm -hmm. And he was wanting to loose me all the time, and it was me hanging on to it because of unbelief. He'd done already bought and paid for all my sin. Yes. But it's up to me to believe, to receive. That's it. And the very moment that I believed with all my heart that he's the Savior, the Son of God, that he died for me, and I was willing to follow him, that load was lifted. When that load was lifted, <laughs> nobody didn't say, nobody, Brother Turner, didn't have to ask me, you know, the Lord? I knew the Lord. Yeah. You will too. Yeah. If you turn your life over to him, you'll know him too. 
So he's heading back home. My father, you know. No, he wouldn't watch the clock. <laughs> heading back home. Yeah. And on his way there, he's a thinking in his mind what I'm going to say to father. Lost man, lost woman, are you thinking in your mind what you need to say to him in your mind, not to me, to the father right now? Are you praying for yourself? Are you putting a lot of ifs in there? If you'll do this, I'll do that. That ain't going to work. He's not money. It's not make a deal, buddy. He's done already done everything that he wanted to do for all of us that we could have salvation. And he's waiting for you to completely just humble yourself before him and say, here I am. I can't do nothing for myself. I have done nothing. If you don't save me, I'm going to die with him. I'm telling you, when you come with that kind of thought in mind, Brother Bill, right down your heart, and no wise will he turn you away. He said, if you come to me with a broken, contrite spirit and faith believing, repenting, as Brother Roger Miner mentioned today, he said, no wise will I turn you away. But I'll make you sons and daughters of the Most High God. Here he's going home. He's heading towards home. And here come Father running out to meet him. Before he ever got to the house, do you know that if you'll move out on this faith before you get up here, Father will already have met you. He'll put his loving arms around you and he'll kiss you on the neck. Now, you talk about natural kiss? No, I'm talking about you'll feel the good spirit of God. That's that kiss of love. And that's what the father done to his son. That he come and hugged him up and kissed him on the neck. And did the son just leave it at that or did he go ahead and do what he's supposed to do? He confessed, didn't he? Yes. <laughs> to me? No. To the father. Who Christ Jesus. You know that Jesus is the high priest. He's the only one, brother Bill. Yeah. There will be another. He's the high priest. That's the one you go to. To reach the father, you go to the high priest. He'll turn to the father and say, hey, that work that you sent me down here to do, man, it's got another amount of hell. Yeah. How good is that? Yeah. So when the father kissed his neck and hugged him up, he started confessing. He said, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and am no longer worthy to be called thy son. I just make me a servant. That's what I am, servant. You all are too. Yeah. Yeah. Because I know that you've got everything that I need. Bread and bread to spare. Think about that. Don't never run out, Brother Thomas. That table stays full. It's this thing's that song. Ever stays full. Fountain running over. Never run dry. When this life's over, going to a country it's called heaven over there. Think about how good that is. You know what the Father done for him? And he done the same thing for us, brother. He said, go and get the best robe and put it on him. That's the robe of righteousness. And you know what best means in Hebrew? It means first. When God made us and we was born here, that we was in favor with God. And we had a robe of righteousness on us because if we'd have died as a child, we'd have got to go to heaven's country. But when we reach that age of accountability, know to do good and done it not, it was sin unto us. The robe of righteousness was off of us. Yeah. I ain't four or five robes of righteousness for every person. No. You're either robe of the righteousness of God or you're not. So he said, go get the best robe that first one and put it on him. Go get the ring and put it on his hand. What is that ring? Some people preach is that eternal love. That's okay. That's good. If you study the old Hebrew, and that's who he was talking to, and in the scriptures there, unto his own people, that, that ring had a signet on the Father. And anywhere that a child would go with that signet ring there, they could purchase things. Uh, they could eat wherever that, that, uh, that they had. That they had those clay pilots that they would pop that down on it. And, and that would be a sign of their daddy's name to it. Now, daddy will come pay for it. Look what good things God has got for us. Yeah. Daddy will pay for it. He's bought it all on the cross, ain't he? Anything else to be purchased? He said, 
When I come again, there's a little fellow that took the half man dead to that end there and said, said, anything more? He said, when I come again, I'll tell you. Is there something more that he's going to give us? Eternal life. Eternal life. Yeah. Glorified body. Yes. He comes again. Oh, yeah. Those scriptures mean more than just the, just a little true story that they are. The spiritual things in there. Mm -hmm. Put that ring on his hand. Put the shoes on his feet. Shoes of what? Of righteousness. Shod with the preparation of the gospel. Yep. Walk in righteousness of the Father through his son Jesus. Think about that. <clears throat> Go kill the fatted calf. I don't know about you. That makes me angry when I, I read that. <laughs> That's <laughs> good eating here, ain't it? That table stays full, don't it? Yeah. The good spiritual things, Brother Tom, it comes down to God out of heaven. It stays full for a man could eat there day or night. Read that <coughs> word, eat that up, drain it right down where you live, down the side of it, never get hungry. Always stay full of that. If if we'll dig after it, got to come to the table, though, don't yeah. we? Yeah. Gotta get in there. And the father began to say, this was my son who was lost and now he is found. This is my son who was dead. Sounds to me like he's talking more than a little natural there. Yeah. Now he's alive. Lost man, lost woman, if you want life, it's here tonight. Have I got it? I told you a while ago, we can't give it to you. We can only present the truth, the life to you, the best that we can understand, Brother Bill, it's up to them to get a hold of it. Yeah. And there's synagogues of Satan in the world that's presenting falsehoods out to the people, and they can't make them eat that except they want it and reach out and get a hold of it. Because there's some that want their ears tickled. They don't want the truth, as Brother was talking about there, because the truth is good for you. It cut flesh all to pieces. It puts you right where you need to be, a humble man, ready for to receive that holy divine spirit. Set you free. Said all this aside, come ye out from amongst the world, and be ye separate, for I am God, and besides me no other Savior. Think about that. Yeah. God loves the stone. Yes. Brought his son in there, and they was just rejoicing and having a good time. Look at that. There was a feller, it was the older son there, that come and heard them being married, eating, rejoicing and everything. Figured out what was going on. Well, look at here, he killed the fatty cat. He ain't never done that to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he has. Yeah, he has. I think about that. I, I've heard that little sermon there preached five different ways. And there's a sixth way, and I ain't never touched on it. I ain't going to for a long time. I ain't not never. <laughs> it's, and it's truth. I mean, he'll cover the truth because it's right in the Bible. You know, God's word is thick and rich. Yes. Later. But one of them is that that old covenant and the Jews that was in it. And it, this is, I mean, this is pretty plain. They was accepted unto God because God accepted them because they was doing what he said to do in that old covenant. At that time. Right. Absolutely, brother. It was at that time. And here is a stranger. I mean, that's exactly what he was concluding, his brother. And it was his brother. Do you know not that the scripture said that the angels are fellow servants and fellow brother? That's what the scripture the angels. All nations of all the world of God's hand creation that we can accept him as our brother, not a stranger, when they give their life to the Lord. So the Lord's talking to the Hebrews at that time, and he's saying, this fellow, he's come in, and he's got jealous. Do you know the old scripture, what it talked about? He said, I will make you jealous with the people that are not a people. They're going to come out of the world and come to me. It's a great covenant, brother. Think about it. Brand new way that he prophesied a long time ago through them old prophets. But them fellows were jealous with him. And he comes in and he said, you know, you ain't, you know, father was concerned. 
Well, Father was so, so concerned, Brother Tommy, that he sent his son down to his Jews first. He said, I come unto my own first. And they received me not, but as many as did gave you them power to become the sons of God. He come to them first. Mm-hmm. So here's this one that's come in. What, what this this fellow and he writes his living. He's a, he's a, he's a pure heathen. He's a wild man. You you accept him? You accept him right back with me? Have I not always been with you? Have I not always served you? You never killed a fatty cat for me. Yeah, he did. He took care of them all those years. That old covenant. They just don't realize it. They're looking for the Messiah to come yet. They don't realize it. Look what he's done for them. He come unto his own first. Yeah, he did. He killed a fatty cat for them. Here's that fatty calf, brother. Jesus. You know what Roger's speaking about today? Down there somewhere? Yeah. Out there in Great Yes. I, I'd read about that probably months ago. That they was, a, you know, and it's been going on for years. They, they breeding, you know, and raising them up. They're wanting to get all these things back in order. They think it's in order of the old covenant. And they, and they want to build that temple back because they know that yeah. that the Lord will not come until he has a temple to walk into. They're looking at Paul Yeah. Well, he had a temple to come into. He had an old fellow that was a Gentile man uh, to see forth to build it. Cyrus, the king of Persia, that sent God's people over there and rebuilt it so that it'd be ready for the Messiah, Jesus, to walk into it. And he did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. cat come right to him first. They received it not. And they're still saying, ah, that's nothing. You felt you ain't got it. Said, well, I'm telling you when the Messiah comes, you'll see what I'm talking about. Yeah. They're going to be badly mistaken. Yeah. No and need to let those yeah. things go, the yeah. carnality of that old covenant. Yeah. It could yeah. never yeah. make the comers down too perfect, but this new covenant of the grace covenant right now is perfect in converting the soul and making the comers down to what? Perfect. Amen. And perfection don't need to be replaced. No. Yeah. It's already perfect. It's already perfect. It's already just right. Yeah. And as I said there a while ago, you're either in it or you're not. And it's your choice whether that you're in it or you're not. How you get in it? I done told you this evening. Turn your whole heart of faith over unto the Lord. Repenting unto the Lord. I said it comes short of the glory of God, just like I was talking about. The little prodigal son, when he come back, he repented. The father just took him right in, roped him up just like all the rest, and accepted him and everything. Did the father throw that other fellow out? Said, you get out of here, jealous of your brother. He's still just talking with him and calling him. Is the father still talking to him and calling to him? Still yet to this day, ain't he? Come ye out from amongst the world and the carnality of it. Be ye separate, for I am God, and besides you no other Savior. Like thankful hearts to come back up and get a song and sing. If there's somebody ready for the church while they sing, let it be known. God is here. Part of the church is here. Scripture says, Whosoever will, Brother Bruce, let them come and drink of the water of life. And it's here. The church is saying, Come. Whosoever will, let them come and drink of the water of life. The church is standing with you. Bless them real good, Lord. You ready for the church? Yeah. Don't put off tomorrow what you can get taken care of today because tomorrow may never come. There's no promise of tomorrow. The old must die and the young will die. Now, am I scaring you again? Yeah. I, they did me. When I was a lost man, I got to thinking about that. I said, just because I'm young don't mean I'm going to be here tomorrow. I, I, I done already went. Back when I was a young man, there was a young man that I went to school with, and, and just just freshly graduated. Think you had your whole life ahead of you. Had a job, a good job. Truck backed up, mashed his head, crushed it, killed him dead. Went to the funeral. Man started waking me up. I started thinking, well, man, that could happen to anybody. You think about that. Horrendous. Today is the day of salvation. Harden not your heart. Now is the accepted time. Listen, you may be the next one to die. And in judgment, you'll lift up your eyes and you'll hear the Lord.
Lord say, depart from me, thou worker of iniquity. You put it off and put it off. And I dealt with you for years and years and years, reaching out to you, and you rejected me. And now, I have to reject you because you didn't receive me. And if I receive you, I have to receive all the rest that's lost. God is a just God. He ain't going to do it. He's going to do exactly what he's told us. Go ahead and sing. Ready for the church to come up and let it be known. Church, be praying for our lost people. This next song, and this won't save you, but it's very important. Brother Tommy was talking about that this morning. This is the things that's from the scriptures that we've done for as long back as I can remember. And give everybody an opportunity to draw a little bit closer to, to God. God said, Draw nigh unto me, and I will draw nigh unto you. He was talking to the church too at that time. Yes. But he's talking to those that's in the church that don't know the Lord. That's what we need to remember when that scripture goes out. He's talking about those that, because we're all there. Yeah. So he said, you draw nigh unto me. It's the promise of God. And God said, I will draw nigh unto you. That means that you've got to start putting this preacher under subjection to what God told you to do. That's, that's the beginning of that faith. Yes. Moving out on it. So while they sing, if you want this band of Christians to be praying for you and you're serious about your eternal soul, you come up and take us by the hand. We won't embarrass you. We won't ask you no questions. We won't try to talk to you anything. We won't keep you. Let's go right back to your seat. I'm telling you that God in this country sees everything and knows everything. 
And who is to say, Brother Chris, that he'll extend their life? Death may be, be down the road in the curve or up the road. And he may say, well, you know, they're moving closer. They, they, they've moved past that flesh enough to where they've moved out. I think I'll extend their life. Is that a promise that he'll do that? No. There's no promise of tomorrow. But I'm telling you, there's a bunch of Christians right here we're praying for you. And what we pray is God give them every ample opportunity. The brother was already praying for yeah. today. Every ample opportunity to turn their life over to the Lord before it's everlasting too late. And I believe the Lord, he said, you ask, you receive not because you ask not. Lord, when we ask, every muster of faith, Brother Chris, we can get you. Yeah. Lord, bless them. Yeah. Don't let them die without you. That's that love God's placed in us. We want God's people to be saved. Amen. While they're saying, if you want this band of Christians, be a friend for you. Come up and take us by the hand. God be blessed. When in a dream I was there, when they crucified Jesus, and in my dream I saw his great agony, well, I ran to the man. church don't give up you know I've mentioned before flight or fight think about it fight, flight or fight now you can run from the word of God run on for a long time there was a sister wrote a song years ago about that but great God Almighty don't cut you down one of these days I mean that's an old song But if you'll fight, what are you talking about fight physically? No, I'm talking about with yourself, fight against this creature right here and do what God told you to do. 
That's putting the scripture under subjection unto the Holy Spirit, the Word of God that does agree. That's right. That's that fight. Yeah. Man, it's a fight to die. Yeah. But we've got to choose to do that. And like the brother said, once we get in, it's a daily thing. Yes. Right. Keeping this preacher down. Not let it rear back up his ugly face. And let it rule, I'm talking about. But let the Lord dwell down in his brother Dale and do what the Lord said with that humbleness and love one to another, having mercy one to another. Yeah. Man, this is the best thing that I've ever got a hold of. And ain't yeah. nothing. Listen, I ain't searching for nothing else because I found perfection. Yeah. And his name is Jesus. Amen. You will too, friend. Would there be one or more here that's on the outside of the church that would be willing to just raise your hand right where you, right where you sit and just say, remember me, church, when you pray. Any hands, Lord. God, God bless you. God bless God bless them. Just keep on coming back. Yes, praise the Lord. Church, we've always got things to pray for, but when they move, my goodness, that just enthuses us so much more. And it goes a long ways in the eyes of God. It absolutely does. So, real good place to be here this evening. We thank you. Everybody showed up. Any appointments that needs to be given out? You remember when Philadelphia's revival is? I don't remember the date you give out this morning. Uh, <laughs> that's really why I brought this. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's uh, the revival out in Philadelphia. It starts to see on May the 12th, and it goes through May the 18th. And of course, Brother Roger Maynard, Brother Tommy Dameron, and Tom, Brother Tony Clay will be a preacher in that Lord's will. And he got singers every night. Um, Kenny Osborne family, Sandra Williamson the family, Echo Quartet, and Williamson family, choir, Copley family, choir. So, you know, down through the weeks. And I've laid this here if you want to look at it. And it's a little bit something other that, that Brother Chess, and I hadn't even noticed until he pointed it out to me. Of course, some been talking about it. The way that his, he had his daughter to do this, and it says service will include singing and and, uh, and, and sermon and communion during church services. And that sounds like every time that we have church service, we're going to have communion. And that's not, you all know how that it works. At the end of that week, on Sunday morning, they have union communion. But it's just the way she put it in there. So uh, I just wanted to clear that up so people wouldn't think, well, man, I don't want to have communion ever. <laughs> oh, but anyway. And it wouldn't be nothing wrong with it if we wanted to do that. God and said it's all done this. Two weeks. Do what? Our communion here is in two weeks. Thank you, sis. Yeah. Absolutely. Looking forward to that. A lot of good things is coming up. If the Lord allows time to roll around, we'd be glad to have you to come and visit our churches and, and hear the good gospel, whether it's from I or they, to so Jesus is preaching, so you believe. Jesus is the preacher. He is the way, the truth, and life. Any other points? Of course, the Bible study down in Philadelphia. Of course, that week of that will be called in, but... Uh, uh, this this week, uh, Wednesday, starts at 6 o'clock or Wednesday night. We're in the book of Matthew, the 25th chapter. And, uh, of course, you know, we're tying other scriptures together that this, that builds the spiritual and the natural things God was teaching to the Jews first and to us. It's to all people. And uh, I, I want people to understand that. So he reached out to his people, the Jews first, with all these scriptures. And there's a big meaning in that. But also, he's reaching out to, and it's still the same. I mean, God's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. It changes not. What he has set forth in motion of this gospel, it's still the same. And he'll save people of this generation exactly as it's done for thousands of years. Think about it. Any other points? Um, I got a special song with our out. Go ahead, Sam. Um, I need your all's prayers. I don't feel good. I'm going to try to sing this song. He is Alpha and Omega. I can't remember how it went. Let's see. God is Alpha and Omega, the true and the great I am. He's the steamer from the tribe of Jesse, the rock in the weary land. He's the great Lord Jehovah, a God that will abound. When you go as far as you will go, God is there by your side. Well, I spent many wasted years trying to survive. I called and I called out of darkness, but no one heard my cry. Then one day I met a man and died to save the world. When he rose in the clouds of glory, thank God I'll hear his call. Well, he is Alpha and Omega, the true and great I am. He's a stem from the tribe of Jesse, a rock of the weary land. He's the great Lord Jehovah, a God that will abound. When you've gone as far as you will go, God is there by your side. Well, I'm headed for a city. Is a land up here delight? They say it's always day up there for the land. He is the light. 
May God come and take his children to the Holy Land. Do not see my Jesus sitting at God's right hand. Well, he is Alpha and Omega, the true and great I am. He's a stem from the tribe of Jesse, a rock in the weary land. He's the great Lord Jehovah, a God at will of boom. And when you have gone as far as you will go, God is there by your side. Praise the Lord. I'll bless you. Anything else? If not, Brother Timothy, would you give us this message, please? Dear Lord, we thank you for allowing us to gather all here again today and come and praise you and worship you. We ask that you continue to be with us, you continue to bless us and watch over us. We ask that you can go with us and help guide us in all of your ways and continue to bless everyone here and those that raise their hands and those that are on the outside, keep guiding them. And just, we ask that you continue to help us, Lord, and we ask all these things in your name, our great Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you, brother. Good prayer. Good prayer. I'm proud of our young people. Right. Amen. Will to set forth and set for the word of the Lord. Yeah.